Let me see. Yeah, it is recording now. So let's make a full main traction for our listener. Good afternoon, Amanda. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., from the studios in Fairfax City. We are very uh, humble and grateful that Amanda Lehman accepted our invitation to the show. Uh, Amanda, welcome to the show. Thanks, Claudio. It's lovely to, to talk to you. Yes, to be on your show. Um, so let's go back to what's going on in the world with the pandemic and people dying and not able to get access to a vaccine and so on so forth. How has this affected your, your life, personal, your life? You, not just as a mom, not just as a musician, but you're, you're, as a musician now, your creativity, the ability to record, you cannot tour, obviously. How has this affected you? Well, yes, it's kind of multi-layered, really. I mean, I, I would say, really, compared to a lot of people, I'm I'm doing all right. Um, I've got lots of things going on, and I've been busy. Um, obviously, there have been no gigs, and that's been... I've missed the gigs, um, and I think that that's been really hard for a lot of people um, across the whole of the arts um and uh for me that's quite i'm quite fortunate really that um i've got other strings the strings to my bow um in the sense that i have other work i can do to keep the money coming in which yeah. is good <laughs> pretty useful um and also i've been able to use this time to really forge ahead on my own solo work um, on my album, which uh, is due out this year, um, which has been really, really useful because I think a lot of the time when I've got gigs coming up, I tend to focus on those um, and prioritise those and the uh, music gets a bit left behind sometimes, my own solo stuff. So it's in a funny sort of way, if I'm going to look at it, purely from a personal point of view and in a positive way, it has given me more time to do that, to concentrate on my solo material. Um, so there's there's a positive for me <laughs> uh, in what is a really dire situation um, globally. It's, it's quite a thing. Yeah, and also at the same time, I don't know if you believe in God or your religion, but you know, there are so many people that have died. So one, we are very happy to be alive. And two, at least for me, does this issue has put a different perspective on life. You know? what, what is real important? You know, I, mm. before, you know, we were busy, you were touring, 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 you know, uh, rehearsing, 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 and, and yeah. we couldn't, like they say here in the United States, we couldn't smell the roses, right? You know, now for me, working from home, it slowed down my life a lot, and uh, and I look from the outside, try to put a perspective of what is important in life, right? You know? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It has. I think for so many people, it's done that, hasn't it? It's 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 yeah, quite yeah, a, yeah, it's a good. Thing really, in all sorts of different ways, and it's really fascinating to find out how it affects different people. What different people say is important to them, and and as you say, it seems to slow things down um and and yeah a different different perspective because I, I think otherwise we're just going 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 and you don't have any chance to step back and think what what really is important here you know a lot of people talk about simple things like um going out for a coffee with a, a friend or something like that you know things that you took for granted before and now you just miss those simple things seeing absolutely and and with all the you know we were busy with all the social media and instagram and facebook and then and the phone people call you just turn off the phone man don't don't post anything you know enjoy your life you're, you know you don't know how many days you're going to be alive in this case yeah. Crazy world politics, so it's it's good to be alive. So let's go back to the beginning. Were you born like in a musical family, and when do you start playing uh, piano be before you began switch to guitars? Or? Uh, yeah, um, well, my dad uh, was very musical. Excuse me, he uh, was a violinist um, amongst other things, and um, he was a really good musician and I had a really good thorough appreciation of music. Um, so I mean, I was uh, surrounded by music from a, a very, you know, from when I was born. Um, 
there was always sort of music in the house. It was very much classical music um, that was around us. Um, and I, so I, I always enjoyed music. Um, I always sang from, I can't remember ever not singing. <laughs> yeah. um, I always loved singing. And I know when I was at school, I learned the recorder and I used to want to be involved in anything to do with music at school. Um, the piano, I started playing when I was eight. Um, and really, the piano is great because it, it's laid out so logically. Um, it, it really did sort of fit very well for me. Um, I kind of, you know, I, I learned it in a classical way. Um, I learned, you know, I knew how to read music anyway, but I always played the piano from written music and it's quite interesting actually because later later on um when i was being more creative for my own stuff i actually found it quite hard to break away from that with a piano with a guitar i was self-taught um i just picked it up and just kept playing it but with the piano um and any kind of keyboard instrument it did take me a while to actually kind of let go of the reins and actually create my own stuff other than just you know reading um, reading uh, written material so that that was that was quite a challenge and I'd started to play the blues on the piano and that was kind of the start of it really to start to play the blues um, to, to break out in order to to actually do my own creation on it so that was quite and, and then at what age you I suppose uh, you talk you have a conversation with your parents and uh, <laughs> you have kind of a couple of options right become try to become a musician, right, in some way, or forget the music and then go to a school and then how, how that decision <laughs> became about, about one way or another, if you could do both or, you know, your parents yeah. saw you well, she's a, you know, she played piano very well and she's learning the guitar and she liked music, she's in her room, you know, listen to the radio, whatever, and, and then you need to kind of, 17, 18, you need to make a decision, right, either college or music or how you, how the decision came about. <laughs> well, I was very willful. I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, there were some arguments, <laughs> but I think that, well, I, I, my dad passed away when I was 14, um, which was, you know, pretty horrific um, and had a major impact on all of us as a family. Um, so I think that that in a way added to what happened afterwards in the sense that I think because my mother was trying to deal with with her own grief and uh, keeping sort of working in order to keep the family going I in a funny sort of way had more freedom and I think my father would have been more strict than my mum was so she did appreciate um, how important the music was to me and I think that um, there wasn't too much pressure on me to go to like uni university as such. Um, I was toying with going to art college for a while and then I decided, well, I don't, you know how teenagers are. I don't want to go to art college. I don't want to do art. I want to do music. So what's the point of spending time doing something I don't want to do? Um, and I dug my heels in and I just said, no, I'm not going. So I did, you know, I did finish school and I went and did my um, A-levels at college, just just got them done in a year and then I was off. Um, that was it. It was, you know, I was already playing music in bands at that point anyway, um, in my spare time. And uh, yeah, then I left college and got straight on with it, basically. <laughs> That was my life. And then uh, at the time, you know, when you were, you know, 18 or whatever, when you began playing with bands, what, what kind of music were you listening to at the time? You know, if you oh, all sorts. Um, oh, what bands were important to you? Uh, the, the Pink Floyd, the Swall, the Genesis, the Rolling Stone, or what? Quite sure that all of them. Bands, bands, bands. Yes, what bands were important to me? Um, well, yeah, Genesis, obviously. Um, was something I, I listened to Genesis a lot and actually Genesis was one of the very first uh, progressive rock bands I'd ever heard. I, I heard um, Wind and Wuthering um, yep. was the first 
one I was aware of when I was younger. Um, so that was sort of with me already. Um, Pink Floyd was another one I really used to listen to. Um, also bands, lesser known bands like Uriah Heep, um, I used to really enjoy uh, Marillion, which kind of was around when I was a teenager. So that that I played a lot of Marillion. Uh, oh, so many bands, um, a lot of rock music as well. I was very into rock, um, and um, oh, all sorts of. I kind of dabbled in some sort of more folky stuff as well. I did like, um, I'm trying to think of an example really, uh, can't think off the top of my head, um, but also bands like All About Eve, um, a little, that was a little bit later um, that I really enjoyed. Um, and then yeah, rocky stuff like Pat Benatar, um, that, that, that sort of music, you know, real gutsy, gutsy stuff. Um, and obviously, oh, of course, Kate Bush. Um, mm -hmm. She was a, a big influence for me as well. And Fleetwood Mac, another one. I just listened to them a lot. Yeah. Of course, I, 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 on and on and on and on. And that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I imagine that you know who David David Sylvian is, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. His music is um, for me, right? So uh, yes, it's. I like all the bands that you mentioned. I. You know, I like them and I like different music a different day and I have a, a lot of music I'm always buying and it's, it's a great satisfaction to have, be music part of your life, if you will, you know. It's a, it's a Absolutely. Beautiful yeah. Do you remember the first vinyl record that you bought on your own or, you know, where, where a lot of vinyls at home? Maybe classical music, but uh, I suppose with your dad being a violinist. Um, well, the first actual album I bought was an ELO album. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I've still got and I still like them as a band. I think they did some brilliant stuff like Mr. Blue Sky and, uh, and um, oh, um, oh, what's the one? The Western, I oh, can't think of the Western girl or I can't remember what it's called now, but there's some really lovely tracks I thought ELO did. And they, yeah, that was the first album I ever bought. Um, You're talking about Western Girl from the Petro Boys or? No, no, not not the Pet Shop Boys. No, the ELO. I can't. The ELO. I can't, oh, I got you. Yeah. that a really nice track. But Mr. Blue Sky, I think, is my all-time ELO favorite yeah, track. Yeah, I get you. Um, so yeah, that was my first album. Um, and then yeah, I, I I can't remember what I used to buy after that, but I know that there was this brilliant little second-hand shop in uh, Brighton where I used to live that I used to go to to get albums nice and cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to love from Brighton. I, I hear that there are so many good bands coming out of Brighton, right? It, I think it was Duran Duran. I think I've seen about the girl. If I remember, okay. maybe I may be mistaken, but it's a lot of somehow there were a lot of in some this I don't recall now, but this a particular town or city in in, in the UK that. Many good bands came out of the same age. Yeah, it, yeah. It was unbelievable, you know, very hard yeah. to have the opportunity like that. And then, so you began, you know, playing with different, some of your friends in from high school, from college, and then uh, you guys were doing gigs, you know, every week, every weekend, and then yeah. making enough money to pay the bills. You're still living at home <laughs> because before, before you took the stuff seriously, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. No, we, I, my, I used to have a, like a wall calendar that was absolutely chock a block full of gigs. I did loads and loads. But I mean, I'd, it was it was a combination of uh, gigs with my own band uh, that we used to perform um, mixtures of original material and cover numbers, depending on the venue you were going to. Yeah. Um, and then I used to do solo gigs and duo gigs, which were better for the money, uh, obviously, for, for making ends meet. Um, in the early days, I used to go busking. So there we go. So, really? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was out there in, in the in the lanes in Brighton with my acoustic guitar and my guitar case, <laughs> oh, singing <okay>. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where were something. you living? Were you London or no? I have no idea where you live. You live I was uh, in Brighton, Brighton, Brighton. Yeah, on the south coast. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. And then, <laughs> uh, and then the big, I think maybe I'm incorrect, but kind of the first, one of the first big break for you was in the 2009, right? Began playing yeah. with, uh, with the Steve Hackett, the bands. And it was, it was, um, is it, it was difficult to get that particular gig. You needed to do auditions, or, or well, I, I know, of course, I know that you know them, but they knew your music, and then how that at the beginning of two thousand nine or so came, came together to for you to begin playing with them. Well, act, as it happens, Steve and Joe came to a gig I did. Um, it was one of my solo gigs, and it was in a it was a particularly challenging audience uh that, <laughs> that night oh. um but i kind of turned it around and I, I did my thing and i'm Steve was really impressed afterwards he said well you know that, uh, he said he said that was you know really good he said oh, I, I wouldn't have wanted to stand there and do that um and i think that that you know rather than knowing that i played he i think actually seeing that sort of gave him a different view and it was after that that he said, would I like to do some backing vocals on Out of the Tunnel's Mouth? So I said, yes, please. So I did did those. And it was sort of out of that that the idea came that the UK, the UK tour was coming up. And um, the idea of me doing some of the vocals that I did on the album actually on the tour. Um, and that kind of grew and I learned other stuff as well, like every day and some of the other music they were doing on those shows. Uh, my mum agreed to look after my son who was very small at the time uh, while I was away. And it all kind of came together really. That's that, it, it was great. And Steve and I just went through some, some of the songs in advance obviously that I wasn't sort of familiar with and went through the guitar parts together um and then I just sort of practiced them on my own and yeah just the, the first gig actually wasn't in the UK it was in Paris um and uh yeah I just joined in and it was just brilliant it was, I loved it uh, <laughs> it's so good to be back on stage again because really? I haven't done any live work apart from these sort of solo shows which were, were a different thing I hadn't actually done any band work for quite some time and it was just it was great and the band it, it just so impressed me um the rehearsal before we did the Paris show and and then you know onwards how well everybody got on together and how <laughs> there was no kind of uh, competitiveness amongst everybody it, it was it was just a joy to to play with everyone and it it was yeah it was an altogether really good experience and good to be back on it again and, and imagine that is is you know i'm a listener of steve Hackett, right i like his music but i don't know how to play an instrument i don't know how to read music how how difficult it is to learn you know all the pieces which the genus he played his own stuff and the genus is it's very complex. It's you no know, that easy that you know you can rehearse a week, but I don't know. Maybe it's good enough. Maybe you know. I don't know how how, how long does it take to really learn this stuff? You know, kind of well to go on to go on on, on, on tour. You know, and play live. Sure, I, I think it, it's a gradual process. I mean, when I started um, joining in with them, um, it I just did a handful of tracks. I didn't do like the whole set. Yeah. Um, so I could focus on those on those tracks, um, but I suppose I don't know. I don't. I do remember it being complicated, but I don't remember struggling with it. If that makes sense, I, I guess because it it wasn't hugely different to some of the music I played. I think what I did realise with it was that you had to be very precise and you couldn't smudge over you know sometimes I'd be doing power calls and it was it was in the way of other stuff oh dear so it, it, it was quite interesting it was a learning curve as well as I went on and became yeah. more and more tuned to what everyone was doing and realizing how orchestrated that stuff was um everybody would play their parts and then they would stop or back right off and you didn't have to be playing your guitar through the whole thing you could just stop and just stand back and then come back in again. So I, I think that that um, the precision of it and yeah, the orchestration of it 
was something I learned as I went along. And the more I did, the, the more kind of I got involved in, in the detail of, of the songs rather than the overall. And um, I think by the sort of, by the time I, the later years when I was full time touring with them and doing pretty much the whole set, I would say I was a much better musician than when I started with them, sure, sure. Um, which was, yeah. Very valuable. And you, and you were with the Chicago band from 210 to 213, right? If I remember correctly, right? That's yeah, right. yeah. And then it was, I suppose, with you know, your 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 son was very young. It's it's hard to be in the road. I suppose you know, kind of, I don't know, 50 gigs a year, and <laughs> you know, my, being a parent at the same time. And I, yes. I imagine that is you know, it's not it's not that easy, right, to manage both family and 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 your your life right so absolutely absolutely it was it was really hard and i think that it got hard well it did get harder um later on because my mother got ill uh she had dementia and obviously um that became more and more difficult although my stepfather did step in a lot to look after my son um as mum got more poorly she started to you know act out and and get quite aggressive and it it just became untenable I, I couldn't carry on um I do remember getting phone calls when I was on tour uh, mum saying right I'm leaving I'm taking Vic with me and we're going and we're oh god it was really stressful um and I just thought I can't I can't do this anymore I I, I you know I'm a mum primarily and after i i just can't so yeah i did have to stop um and it was at a funny so it was actually when um steve and the band were starting the genesis revisited um, yeah, so, yeah. so it seemed like quite a good time actually to to make that change at that point uh nad was was with them and um you know doing that wonderful um performance that he gives um it, it, so it was a new incarnation of the band and um there would have been less for me to do anyhow uh, even though steve was dead keen on me staying um which was really nice actually <laughs> to, to know um but yes, it, that was the time to step out and then it's great because I can still dip in and do the guest spots. Um, so it's not like it was totally over. Um, and you have appeared, you have been, I think in, in some years and some shows, been like a guest member. Yeah. You play some gigs and make a little bit of money there that way too. Which, yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's lovely to be able to still attend a few shows and um, you know meet up with everybody again and um, yeah, see so just still be part part of it, even though it was a part time thing with them. And obviously, I do still get involved with the uh, albums, uh, the recording. Um, I've done some on. Um, the album that Steve's working on at the moment and although obviously we can't record together I can do that here uh, in my home studio and send it to down to Roger King and um, then he sorts it all out the other end so it's great we just do it remotely now and um, so I'm you know still involved in that so I'm still very sort of connected to it all um, and uh, able to obviously be mum at home as well and uh have to try to of, have a good balance you know make yeah. enough money to pay your bills and be a mum <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's, it's spinning place it really is yeah, it's I, 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 that. Know, but hey. you, you know i i have as, like i told you before i have a, a son your age so i i, I know how it's like it's a, lot, yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of work it's a lot of work <laughs> yes it and, is uh, getting easier as they get older <laughs> It's a different, different kind of problem, a different kind yeah. of issue. So, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> how's the situation? By the way, how's the situation in 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 the UK right now? Is still uh, are some zones opening up? Is everybody getting a vaccine or or, or not? No. When they will open up for 
for musicians and for people to go outside is six months from now, a year from now, do you know? It's a million dollar question, isn't it? it I mean, I think that, uh, oh, there's a lot of discussion generally about the whole situation at the moment. Obviously, we're in full lockdown at the moment still. Yeah, full lockdown. Um, and um, the vaccine is getting rolled out at a reasonably good rate. Um, so when, I, when I'll get mine for talking sake, I don't know yet um that it'll happen at some point um when when we get back to gigging i i'm hopeful <laughs> that we'll be sort of by summertime i mean there's some obviously there's a uk tour in september and october um for steve and the band um so as far as i know that's going ahead um but uh, with this thing this this whole covid situation it, it depends on how it progresses i assume um it depends on how well the vaccines turn out to go it depends on new <laughs> variants and mutations so <laughs> goodness knows what yeah um so yeah all being well there'll be a tour in in the you September, know October. Wait, somewhere. yeah 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 so um I know there's um, America coming up for Steve. I don't know if that's happening or not. Um, that, you know, that, so, you know, is that, that and that's soon. So I don't know, you know, what's happening abroad, but I know this country is still locked down. So there's nothing going on here gig wise at all at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in the United States, the same. I, I have talked to a lot of musicians and early during the year, no, late last year, they saw well by the summer. But that being May, June, July, August, right? And yeah. then now the, the people I interview, they say no, they have to to September. Yeah, yes. So uh, yeah. very likely will not happen until next year. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Or bands are moving the show, you know, for six months from now, or whatever. Even even yeah. I was planning less, late, late last year, I was planning on traveling this coming April to London to see uh, Genesis, you know. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, and, and yeah. And then they, uh, they, they yeah. push it to the fall, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was planning to go in May to see Eric Clapton, which is a hero of mine, played at the oh, Royal Albert Hall. He's doing four nights in a row. And I, I look at the Royal Albert Hall, and it's still a show that is playing, but very likely it's going to be canceled and move or postpone, whatever the word they use, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. No, unfortunately, that's going to happen. So I want to bring your attention to uh, three songs I was listening to, um, your stuff on YouTube and then uh, Spotify. And uh, what can you tell me about Memory Lane and how that uh, the particular song came came together? That's a beautiful piece, actually. Thank you, thank you. Very good yeah. stuff. Very good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Memory Lane. Um, yes, I'm proud of that one. It was uh, a labour of love. That was. Um, it, uh, that was written over a long period of time. It, it was inspired by um, my mum's illness, um, her dementia. Um, and I kind of, the, the, the first time I started to write, it was after I'd seen her one day um, when I was driving home. And I just uh, felt really tearful and upset after it all. And I pulled over in the car and um just started writing down some words some thoughts some lyrics sort of like almost more like a poem and uh it grew from there I, I i started i found it quite therapeutic to actually start to create a song around it um and so that just grew and grew and it, it, i didn't force it and um Mum passed away in 2016, um, and even and after that, I started to sort of put that song together. I felt it was an important thing to do, not just for me, but for so many people who have experienced this disease. Um, and I've found that now I've written it, recorded it, and done the video, and I've performed it live as well. Um, I found that it really does seem to resonate with people um, and make a difference. It, 
it's a connection it's like cathartic uh, i think although it's a sad song it's a bit like watching a sad movie it, it, you might cry watching the movie but afterwards you you kind of feel better and i think and i hope that generally that's what this song does for people it it connects for them and um uh, that's that's important to me to try and reach out to other people yeah i, I did, did you feel that you didn't have another choice to write a song i mean some song uh, kind of sort of kind of personal question right so a lot of musicians they write songs about what's going on in their life a boyfriend or girlfriend or you know marriage or whatever and Some people put in writing and this and other people say, no, 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 that's personal stuff. I'm not going to do a song. And let me see yourself, you know, put in writing and, and it, it resonates with many people. Like I'm, I'm, it didn't happen to me, right? I'm, I'm a consumer of your music, right? And it, it's, it's a beautiful and powerful song. So sometimes, you know, people don't, like a musician or an artist, right? Doesn't have a choice. They need to put it out, right? Yes. Yes. I think that's very true. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Sometimes uh, you just, it, it's like a song almost has to be. <laughs> Sometimes it's like it just has to, to, to be born. And there's other songs that you might think you want to write. Sometimes I really get into an idea and then I kind of think, nah, just no, that, 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 that's not going to work. I'm not, no, I've lost interest in that. But I think there are some songs and they are, quite often the very personal ones um that yeah they just have to see the light of day um and yes it's, it's, it's a marvelous form of expression music uh it was for me like as a teenager i was very shy um i, I didn't dress shyly i i was kind of a bit of an odd but i suppose <laughs> so i used to sort of dress very sort of unusually um